What's up everybody, Drum here back, yes, finally, and once again doing another trailer analysis slash breakdown video on the latest trailer for the Persona 5 freaking trailer. And it's <laughs> it, it's so amazing. Now before I start going fanboying <laughs> on this video segment, um let me just continue on with my introduction. Drum Talos is the name. If you guys are new to the channel, welcome to the channel and I'm just gonna leave it at that. I'm just gonna leave it at that. If you guys wanna go check out the channel by itself, that'd be pretty cool. I would appreciate it, but if you guys don't want to, that's fine with me. Anyways, yes, I haven't done a freaking trailer analysis slash video breakdown in such a long time that I feel rusty. So just a fair warning, I might stutter a lot <laughs> during this freaking uh, breakdown analysis. So without further ado, let's just get started with this damn thing, shall we? So, in the first couple of seconds, we see nothing special going on. Nothing special going on. It's just a helicopter flying in the distance. Next thing you know, we get a scene where it's almost like a party, but then on the next scene that happens after that, it turns out to be a casino. And then things get interesting after that because we see men in black. Now, we do not know if these are actual government officials in the game or these are just security forces in the casino itself whatever the case is they're looking for somebody they're looking for somebody and they're about to beat that dude's ass <laughs> oh my god and then the next thing you see is just your character not your character the main protagonist flying across the screen eh, all right next thing you know he jumps out the window what the hell is going on <laughs> So after uh, seeing all that, I came to two conclusions. Either one, they are thieves, or two, they are just a pack of vigilantes. And basically, the pack of vigilantes things was correct. I was actually right about that, thank god. Uh, that's pretty cool to, that's pretty cool though, sorry. To think that they are vigilantes. Uh, the story behind them is that they are basically being attacked by an unknown force. And what they're doing is you know right for their eyes but at the same time for the general public they see them as you know like as a menace so that's actually pretty interesting to for them to be treated as like such criminals it's pretty damn cool oh yeah M remember the persona 5 teaser trailer with the uh, the five chairs with the ball and chain at the end of them please Keep that in mind, uh, because I'm actually gonna <laughs> involve this segment along with that segment, and hopefully I could be correct about this. Just hopefully, I'm not gonna be. I'm not like 100% sure myself, but it seems like it would fit. Anyways, let's just get on with it. It goes into this nice melody beat. Oh my god, that I absolutely love. That I have to freaking find a hard copy of. <laughs> Anyways, after that, you see a character jumping onto a highway, a freeway, something like that. He's jumping onto a freeway, freeway, but look carefully. I want you guys to look extremely carefully because when he's jumping, he has like three flaps at the end of his trench coat. Keep that in mind because I'm assuming that this dude is the main character right there. But the main character appears later within this part of this this part of the uh, the trailer. But again, uh, it's, it has to be the main character. It has to be. So that's one chair filled. Now fast forward it to the next scene or the next uh, character, and it's the female. Uh, she's also wearing a mask, and she's look like she's actually wearing a cat suit. Don't know why a cat suit. Uh, maybe within this game, the males don't wear the like some kind of animal outfit but I, I highly doubt that's the case but she's wearing a cat suit I don't know why <laughs> I don't know why and she's wearing a mask she's part of the vigilantes it's pretty damn cool so that's two chairs filled three this dude who I do not know and I'm pretty sure a lot of people who don't know who the hell this guy is either yes prepare for a lot of stuttering <laughs> in this damn segment all right I'm, I'm tired but anyways yes this guy or woman is the third character to fill in the chairs in the P5 teaser trailer. I'm just putting things together, man. I'm just putting things together. 
and we really don't know who this guy is or woman is because he or she doesn't appear within the rest of the trailer. So, what the hell? And this is the fourth. Now he appears in the trailer. He's the uh, blonde character. Or oh, not blonde character, but the, yeah. Yeah, he's the blonde haired dude who's apparently like friends with the main protagonist. So that's four chairs filled already. Four chairs. And then here comes the main protagonist. Boom. And then he's gonna strike a pose. Now if you go frame by frame when he lands, he also has three, f not yeah, he has three flaps at the end of his trench coat. That's why I said the first dude has to be the main protagonist because the flaps at the end of his trench coat matches the freaking flaps on this dude's trench coat. So, it, to me, that has that's still four chairs um, filled. The fifth chair that I am assuming has to be the uh, the cat. Uh, if you guys watched the trailer, you guys would know I'm talking who I'm talking about. But the cat. It sounds absurd, but it's just it's just a high it's not a high probability, but it could be a possibility. Anyways, yes, the main character lands on a train, he's striking a pose, and he takes off his mask. Now here's another interesting part that happens. Two velvet room attendees. Holy hell. At the same time, I was not expecting this one. And they are childlike. But I highly doubt they are immature. They're probably like super mature, probably more mature than <laughs> freaking Margaret, but holy hell, man. They are actual twins. This is not a mirrored image. Uh, the left one has the hairstyle of a ponytail, while the right one has the hairstyle of like two buns, like Chun Li status. And they are both females, and they're again, they're like childlike, man. They're childlike. Oh my god. And then you see Igor just sitting there being all creepy and shit. But let's let's rewind that back, baby. Let's rewind that back. So even when you're introducing or just seeing the the new elevator attendees, elevator attendees really drum the new Vera room attendees. You see them behind bars, and you go frame by frame, and you before before Igor appears, and within his surrounding, it looks like the velvet room has changed into a freaking prison holding cell it's so it's really bizarre because back in persona 3 it was the beautiful elevator elevator damn i cannot speak right and then in persona 4 it was the luxurious freaking um limousine and now it looks like he's in some kind of prison holding cell maybe this is not the official velvet room but I'm assuming it is because Igor's literally just sitting there. He's literally just sitting there. It's like Igor's downfall. He did something so horrendous that he just went to hell. <laughs> so yeah. And then next scene, it's not next scene is not too fancy. It's just a dude that falls and he turns into like this bird demon entity that has horns and it looks like he's actually wearing a top hat. But uh, if you go frame by frame, and not even frame by frame, you can see it when it plays at its natural speed. He whips out a chain. A chain. So hopefully, this is what I'm thinking. Hopefully it could actually be in par with the you are a slave, do you want emancipation? Hopefully it could be similar in that kind of way. If it's not, and it's just his weapon being shown off, then whatever. <laughs> whatever. And then there is the beautiful Persona 5, so basic logo showing. And this is the part where I just smiled so damn hard. Uh, the actual gameplay footage. Now, if you guys followed me on Twitter, I told you guys this, man. I tweeted this out so many times. I'm not going to fall in love with this game or not even be hyped for this game until I freaking see actual gameplay of it. And they freaking delivered. I, I am so happy to see the level of progression that this game is at right now. Not only that, I like its art directory because it's looking like it's looking similar to Catherine. And I, I love Catherine, man. Oh my god, I really do. I love how it was looking like, too. And then, yeah, it's, uh, it just looks really cool. It's a whole new different... It's a whole new change for the Persona era. Not Persona era, but for the Persona series, that is. They ne It never looked like this. Sure, the 3D modeling stayed the same. But, yeah, you know what I mean. Persona 3 had 3D models. Persona 4 had 3D models. But this one is taking it to a whole new level on how it's looking like. I, I really like it. And this is the funny part. How is your teacher gonna chuck 
a piece of chalk to your head and then it apparently it hurts so much that you almost broke your neck freaking <laughs> going back at it so in this scene I assume right away that they are uh, in high school they well yeah even on the site it said it themselves they are in high school which I'm actually kind of disappointed uh, I wanted them to be in college I, I just I just wanted them to be in college man I don't have a problem with playing like high school students in games the problem is it's being overused so many times that I just want something new I just want something new let them be in college let them have a different scenario in life that would be kind of crazy and awesome at the same time but no no it's let's just let's just take it back to high school everybody love high schoolers eh, whatever so after that scene, you just see uh, you and your friends just hanging it out. The the blonde haired dude, you got the main protagonist, you got the female, and then you got the creepy ass looking ass cat. Holy hell, it looks scary as hell. And I'm not gonna lie, I do like how the female look. She looks, she actually looks pretty cool. I like it. I like it. And this is the scene that caught that caught my attention so hard. Like, oh my god, they're actually in college. They're not in high school anymore. They're in a bar. No, it is no, they're not in a bar. Sadly. Uh, well, not sadly, they're just chilling, and it looks like it's some kind of coffee shop. There's Coca-Cola branding. <laughs> just, just <laughs> whatever. But uh, yeah, this is this scene made me think that they weren't in uh, college, but sadly they're they're not. It's whatever. And this cat thing right here, you see it? That's what your cat actually transforms into. What the hell is it? Hopefully, it's not gonna act like Teddy. Um, Teddy, like. Every time a game happens in a in a uh, franchise, it has to be something different. Like, okay, Teddy's personality it was a one-time thing. It like he was corny as shit. He was annoying to me at least, and uh, uh, it, it's whatever. So hopefully, this cat thing is like just the opposite of Teddy, but maintain but can maintain the same charm. You know what I mean? Where everybody actually likes him. Ah, uh, this scene, man. Ah, uh, I want to know who's what's. Their, I want to know what their name is, man. I really do. And here's the scene. Nothing special going on. Just them going ham. And here's the female, and she looks like she can be a dancer, which I'm totally fine with. That'd be pretty damn gnarly. The cat becomes a superhero. And here's the command. The command menu. Ah, holy hell! Now I'm pretty sure you guys already see it. That the thing that stands out the most is cooperation. What the hell is cooperation? Is it like in Fire Emblem where you team up with like a, uh, a certain partner and then you gain affiliation with him? <laughs> I highly doubt that, but uh, I, I don't know what the hell it is. So skill, item, equip, uh, party, mission system is still there. The thing that catches my attention too is Persona. So is it one persona that's actually going to be used within this game, or you can have multiple ones, same same thing as the P3 and P4 protagonists, which I'm assuming that's going to be the case. And here's the funny part: you see how he went to equip, and then here here are the like catalogs, not catalogs, the uh, I don't even know the equipment statuses. I whatever. You got weapon, gun protector, which is of course going to be like armor, accessory, and clothes. Why the hell is gun on its separate tab? Why? It should be under weapon. It's the same thing. And then I was like, what the hell? But then I played the trailer more and it turns out that weapon is going to be his like his dagger. So similar to the other games, it has to be in that or not me, not being what the hell. It has to mean that every other character is gonna have something unique to them. Uh, this guy is gonna wield daggers, and he's gonna have a pistol. And later on, you'll see uh, actually the blonde dude who he's wielding a shotgun. And yeah, that's about it. He's wielding a shotgun. I haven't seen anything else. And here's the one thing that caught everybody's attention, especially mine. Uh, he jumps down onto the scene. And you could tell already what's happening. They took away like the top down view on what Persona 3 and 4 and 2 had before. And they changed it with like a third person view 
over the shoulder camera shot. I really do like it, I really do. And I cannot wait to freaking see how, if it's a maze, you know how like in the, uh, how in Persona 3 and Persona 4 is like, how this is gonna implement that. Like you're not gonna be able to see them in the corner because from this scene alone, there's no such thing as maps. <laughs> what the hell? So, we'll see. Oh, let me crack my back. We'll see what's gonna happen. Uh, you get to see some enemies. You get to see a golden knight and some silver looking knights. I'm assuming these are shadows, most likely. And here's another scene where he's actually jumping from chandelier to chandelier. Now, from what from what I seen after this, I was like, there. That means there has to be two ways to approach your enemy. Uh, one is the head-on collision one without any regrets at all, and two is the stealthy approach where you could just avoid your enemy at all costs. If that's the case, then damn, there's gonna be some stealth segments in this damn game. There's gonna be there's gonna have to be uh, some fights that you just cannot win. You gotta just make your move around them. But that's my that's my theory. Hopefully I'm right. <laughs> just hopefully. And here's the one that is really impressive and unique by itself. Um, the main protagonist is teleporting from cover to cover. He's basically Wesker. <laughs> but anyways, this is a new mechanic to basically the basically the whole Persona series. Like stealth in general. Like what the hell is going on in this game? This is really this is really getting interesting. And they're a group of vigilantes, so it makes perfect sense for them to have stealth-related things. But like, how's he gonna approach the enemy if he's stealthy? If he's being in stealth, can he jump scare the enemy and the enemy will run away? Or can he completely bypass the enemy without alerting them at all? We don't know. Hopefully one of those cases can be true. Especially the one being scared shitless. <laughs> but anyways, uh, let's just continue on after that. Uh, we get to see a slight um, name actually when uh, your the main protagonist is in, in the clinic. Uh, the name that pops up is Takemi Takemi Tai Takemi Tai. I think I'm saying that wrong, but uh, that's actually pretty unique to see the names of like the I guess you could say the people you buy stuff on. That's pretty. That's pretty cool. I like it. That's definitely a woman too. Them legs. Anyways, here's your new waifu. <laughs> She's gonna replace Chie, Naoto, Rise, and Yukigo, all those kind of people. But, uh, yeah, that's about it for that scene. And then they're running away in something. Now, hopefully, this can be like some kind of a dungeon. Because normally, dungeons do not crumble. Normally, they do not. So it'll be unique to see what the hell is going on. Or maybe. This is actually a freaking house that is freaking crumbling before their eyes. That'd be that's unique. That'd be pretty damn cool to be honest. And they have to escape with their lives. Hell yeah, I'm totally down with that. Another store, just weapon store. And then here's the one thing that caught my attention completely: the two elevator attendants. Elevator attendants. Ah, I keep saying it. The two velvet room attendants, the new ones, are guarding the main protagonist's cell. And he's behind bars. What is this? Is is he going insane? Is this part of the game's story? Like, what is going on? He looks insane. Oh, uh, uh, sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, but uh, when you play it, he looks insane. Like, he's shaking the bars and shit. His eye looks like it's just lopsided in hell. And here, we get to see some actual action. Some fighting action. So... You got the P5 protagonist who actually wields the pest pistol, and like I said, when you in this scene, you will see the the blonde-haired character guy wielding a shotgun, and then you get to see the cat wielding a slingshot. But it doesn't seem to show that the female character in the background is not wielding any mid to close range weapons at all. It's pretty interesting, so that means maybe that she's limited, like she can't um, have weapons like that. That would be kind of weird. But anyways, uh, with that going on, we get to finally see their all-out attack. It's pretty okay, I like it. They, they literally go into a phantom dance and kill their enemies. It's pretty legit. Pretty legit. Oh yeah, I'm not sure if you guys noticed too. The damn enemies that they were killing were Sandman's and a pyrojack 
Well, not Pyro Jack. What the fuck, Jack O' Lantern? What is going on? Why are they attacking them? Why? Who knows? But uh, oh man, that's literally, literally about it for the uh, the trailer. Despite the uh, the ending, let's just fast forward to the ending right now. Brought to you by Atlas, or presented by Atlas. So within this ending, what the hell is going on? It looks like his mask is made out of freaking blood. That's that's my impression that came off first. Like it's a blood mask. It's a it's a blood masquerade mask, and his eyes turn yellow, like a like a Izanagi's eyes. Next thing you know, it dissolves. What the hell? And then a, a blue flame comes out comes out of nowhere, and his mask literally completely is just vanished. And here's the interesting part. He the mask gets replaced by like this blue butterfly looking masquerade mask. It looks very similar to Margaret's mask in uh, Persona 4 Ultimax. But guess who popped in my mind when I first saw this? The guy from Persona 2. I think his name was uh, Philemon or something like that. That's the character that popped in my mind. And I was like, oh my god, they have to be connected some way and somehow. And I, I highly doubt that's the case, but It'd be pretty interesting if he made his return, and like for a short amount of time either way, but it'll be pretty ish interesting for him to make his return. So yeah, uh, I ha again, I highly doubt that him and Philemon is connected in some way possible, but again, I want, if, if there's a cameo about Philemon in the game, that'd be pretty damn cool. And more and more he gets ablaze in blue flames, and then his body literally gets covered in flames. And he wait, what? Hold on. Oh wow, interesting. I didn't see that. So at the very last couple of seconds, I, I didn't see this at, at least. Um, his hands being covered in flames, and it, it turns into like fire claws. That's pretty damn cool. That is pretty legit. I like that. I really do. <laughs> Persona Five, and that's about it. Now, in the trailer, of course, you don't see his persona at all, but thank you to, like, basically the internet, um, we get to see a, 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 a persona, I'm assuming, a new persona that appears right behind uh, the main protagonist's back in this picture right here. I gotta remember to put that picture there. And it looks very, very interesting. I really, really do like it. Um... The thing that catches my attention the most is that it looks extremely evil. Extremely evil. So... Jesus Christ. I want. I just want to see what the hell this thing's name is. <laughs> that is going to be awesome as hell. But that ends it for my trailer analysis slash breakdown. I hope you guys have enjoyed. Um, what do you guys think about this trailer in general? Did you guys like it? Did it hype you up to freaking actually buy the game now? Or what? I'm not gonna lie. Again, I was not hyped for Persona for blah 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 blah. I cannot speak. I was not hyped for Persona 5 at all. Like I knew about it, I love Persona series, but I wasn't hyped for it at all because I didn't see anything on it just yet. Until today when they showed the freaking gameplay footage that I cannot get out of my head. It's just so amazing to watch it, man. It's so amazing to see how much progression it is. Or not pro what? It's good to see how much of progression it has made to this day there it is it looks really good anyways if again if you guys enjoyed this please hit that like button it will really help out my channel it will really help out me at the same time and i would really really appreciate it um, and again if you guys want to check out the channel go ahead and do so that would be pretty damn gnarly if you guys do but if you guys do not want to freaking check out the channel then that's totally fine with me that is totally fine with me Anyways, Drum Tellers is the name. I am about to go edit this thing after a nice quick nap because I, I stood up all night collecting Persona 5 data just to make a damn video. Urgh, I gotta sleep. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, I'm done for today. Uh, again, thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.